Before we get into our main feature, I wanted to take a little side road and show you something cool that I picked up just this weekend while out thrift shopping. It's the Sanyo Sportster, and it's a portable cassette player, also sometimes called a Walkman, although Walkman really belongs to Sony. So here we have the Sanyo Sportster, and it's inside of this uh, cool old protective case. And uh, it's got a really unusual feature to it that I just had to show you. Now, I'm assuming this little booger came out in the 1980s. Uh, it is made in Japan, as you can see here on the back. But I wanted to uh, pop these little uh, snaps off here and take it out of the case just so I could show you just how cool this thing is. So it has a feature that I've never seen before on a portable cassette player, and that is the radio is essentially a cassette tape that's on the inside of the unit. So here is your radio, your AM FM tuner. Now apparently it doesn't do what many of these uh, cassette FM AM tuners would do. It does not send the signal through a head there on the end. It sends it through these pins on the back. So I would assume it powers it and it also gets its signal from it here as well. And if you look in the back of the well where the tape goes, you'll see where those pins connect. Okay. Now the thing that you'll run into with these particular units is due to age, a lot of times the motors in them are wearing out and that's exactly what is happening with this one. But you can see this part here has a different model number than the unit itself. This is a model number MGR110 and the unit itself is actually a Sanyo M-G34DT, okay? Works off of two AA batteries. The cool features that it has, uh, it has a separate volume control for both the left and right channels, has a metal slash chrome selector and normal selector, and you can see here it says metal tape. That must have been a big deal back then is to have metal tape. And metal tape is pretty cool, but I've always found chrome to be just fine. Uh, function, tape and radio, your headphones. It does have Dolby B noise reduction, and there's your on-off switch there with its own little light indicating that it's been activated. It also has a battery indicator there. Got a clip on the back here to clip onto your belt. We have a DC 3 volt input here. We have fast forward and rewind, which is kind of unusual because they're kind of in backward place there. Usually rewinds over here, fast forwards over there stop button there again there's the model number on the back and then over here we have the uh, the way to reach the controls that are on the radio tuner so those controls happen to be stereo mono and FM AM so let's go ahead and try out the tuner first and I've got my autumn speaker system connected back here in the back you can see the cool green light on that Go ahead and plug that in and let's just see what happens. So we're going to put this on radio. It's already on radio and then you have to push play on the side. And off goes the tuner. Now it, it appears as though the uh, this speaker is actually producing some interference for it. So it's it's also strange to see uh, AM on uh, on one of these little tape devices in here. Let's see if we can switch it over. Oh wow, that's really loud. Okay, but the AM tuner does appear to work regardless of the amount of uh, interference we're getting from whatever electrical appliances are in my house. Almost got something there. And then we got a stereo mono switch. This almost looks like it says PSP there on the side. I thought that was kind of funny. So anyway, enough of that. That is the AM FM tuner, which will work better as long as you're out in the woods and away from Wi-Fi and other crazy signals that are going to mess with it. But I thought that was pretty cool. Now let's play a tape. Now again, I mentioned earlier about the motor in this thing, and I did replace the belt in it but uh, it just didn't fix the flutter problem that it has. So I'm assuming that the motor in it is going out. Again, very common with an older Walkman type machine like this. 
So let's switch it over to tape. This particular recording has two uh, versions, one without Dolby and one with. So I'll let you hear both. Okay, so again, this is without Dolby noise reduction. On. And there's a little variance in speed there too, which I did adjust the speed. I found the little potentiometer that adjusts the speed. All right, so not going to play anymore because you can hear there's quite a bit of flutter in there. But uh, really cool old Sanyo 80s little tiny entertainment system here. Cassette, AM, and FM in a cute little package. So now let's get on to our main feature. And here she is, our main feature, the Sony AV-3650. Sony-matic solid-state video recorder. This is a reel-to-reel -reel VTR video tape recorder using the EIAJ standard. And I was so excited to find this one. I found this on Craigslist. And the guy who had it kept it in storage for many years. And he was a guy who went into businesses and bought up all of their furniture that was left behind after a business closed. And this unit was sitting in his warehouse, uh, but it was indoors remarkably. So the unit is very clean. It has been kept very nicely over the years. So uh, first let's look at the jack panel on the back. So here is the jack pack on the back and the jack pack allows you to hook it up to all kinds of cool peripherals like cameras and monitors and all kinds of fun stuff. So these two particular connections here are probably pretty prominent and they are called UHF connectors and I'm not sure why they call them UHF but you have video in and video out which can be converted to RCA which I have some connections that convert it to RCA and then you have audio connectors here mic in auxiliary in and then you have a line out which is the audio that you connect to your monitor and then you have RF out radio frequency out over here you have camera TV an AC output of 120 volts, 500 watts, so you could plug your camera in right there and power it off of this if you wanted. AC in, 120 volts, 60 hertz, and a 1.5 amp fuse. Over here is an interesting little panel here. It has an interesting uh, message on it. It says, this video tape recorder is not to be used to record copyrighted works. Okay, so don't ever do that. Okay, just so you know. An RF modulator can be placed inside of here. It was a proprietary one that allows the unit to be hooked up to a standard television set. And now with the lid removed, this is the Sony AV3650. I've got my testing tape on there. Now this testing tape is actually three VHS tapes that I've spliced together on this reel. So I got rid of the original tape from the reel and put my own tape on it for my test recording. So that bypasses any issues I have with sticky tape syndrome, which a lot of these old tapes have. I was really lucky with my Panasonic that you've also seen on my channel because the tapes that came with it, none of them had that sticky tape syndrome. Although this one came with one tape and it's a Sony brand tape and it does have that sticky tape syndrome. So we'll have to see if we can bake it or something and, and get that out of there. But let's go over the features of the unit because it's got some really cool ones. Starting over here on the left side, we have our skew control, left and right. We have a tracking meter as well as a tracking control. So you have a like an on-off clicking status right there at the left side. You have your input select, so you have camera, line, and TV right there. I used line recently to record uh, from a VHS tape onto it. We have an external sync switch, so we have normal and defeat, agony of defeat. 
Over here we have uh, audio level and with the audio level meter you can select whether you want it to have automatic gain control or manually adjust the audio level here. Same thing over for the video level. So you can do your video level manually or with automatic gain control there. And over here is your manual video level. Okay. Over here we have a slow speed section and this is really cool. You can pull this part up and then go left to right and basically do still and very fast uh, you know frame by frame almost playback although it's not quite frame by frame it does have a little bit of special effect feature there you have your power on and off switch here underneath this little door you have an audio dub as well as an edit button so you can punch in uh, some uh, you know change your video as well as do some audio dubbing here's your record button here is your um, counter, your tape counter. And then over here, as far as the uh, tape control, you have rewind, stop, forward, pause, still, fast forward. There's your capstan, pinch roller, audio head, and tracking head inside of there. You got a, a guide post here, a guide post here. So to thread the machine, you go to the left of this little guy. This corresponds with the skew control there and you just wind your tape around here around the big video head drum around here and then up to your take up spool now i did have to do some work to the inside of this unit um, essentially it needs a new belt i don't know where to get one haven't found a source for a new belt but it does need a new belt so it, beyond that it absolutely works fantastic with the exception when i got it this reel didn't turn at all there was no motion on here. So I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, by taking the hood off of this thing and showing you how I was able to overcome the problem of no take up or fast forward. So when I first received the unit and plugged it in and turned it on, there was no take up whatsoever. The rewind was working, but there was no take up from the take up spindle. So what I had to do was take this little piece off here. Now this right here is a little wheel and it handles two functions. It handles the take up spindle for playback and it also handles fast forward. And I'll show you in a second how clever they did this, all right? So there's two stages that the unit is on. There's this lower stage here, you can see it with the black, and then there's an upper stage up here, which is the brown. Now while it's down here, there's a foam insert in between those two pieces. So kind of sandwiched in there like an Oreo cookie is this piece of sponge or some felt. And that separates this top piece from the bottom piece. So when the idler wheel is down here, it has uh, basically a felted or a not exact contact with the top, which allows it to have some give to it, some take. And when it's attached to the brown, it's a completely one-on-one -on -one contact between the motor and this spindle, which gives you more torque for fast forward. So the problem I had when I first got the unit was that this piece right here, this little hinge right here at the bottom was completely locked up, which meant that this wheel was basically just sitting here and wasn't connecting to any of the stuff in here. Now on the other side of this arm, which is kind of an L shape, Okay. On this side was a spring, and the spring pulls the pulley that way so that it gets in contact with both of these two pieces here, the black and the brown. So let me demonstrate for you how that works. So if I put it in playback mode, now you can see that the take-up spindle is taking up, and you can also see that it's attached to the brown or the, uh, the black part on the bottom, which allows me to grab a hold of it like this and essentially stop it. So it's riding on the top of that foam underneath there right now, okay, which allows it to, you know, be taking up, but not have so much force that it, you know, basically rips the tape in half. Now for fast forward, when I move it one more segment over, the pulley now moves up a piece and it is attached to the brown. Now I'm not going to attempt to stop it, but you can see there is plenty of torque going on there to pull a big heavy reel of tape across the tape heads okay so let me demonstrate that again so there's fast forward and there's playback and again that idler wheel moved back down to the bottom position 
And there again, it's fast forward. So for rewind, both of these gigantic wheels here are taking care of getting the energy from the motor spindle here over to this other supply spindle. So if I go backwards, now you can see that those two big tires are now spinning and getting the energy over here to this take up spindle. Pretty cool, huh? So that's the inside of the unit there. I'll just kind of move the camera back here so you can see the whole thing as it's taken apart here. You can see your uh, heads there, your race head, gigantic uh, video head, audio head. Here's your pinch roller here, this part here. Uh, actually, the pinch roller goes on here. It's just been removed, and this is the uh, capstan right there. Okay. Here is your uh, counter, tape counter. It's connected right there. So if I put it in the fast forward mode, you'll see that the tape counter starts turning right there. And we'll pull the camera back so you can see the entire unit in action. You are now looking at the unit completely taken out of its case. I'll show you the case over here. There were four screws on the bottom that had to be removed, and I actually took the, the little frame or bracket that goes around the top, took that part off. You can see it sitting over there. But uh, let's take a look at the underside of this unit as well. So here is the front of the unit and all the circuitry and wiring that you see there. The unit does happen to have a belt-driven video head. So right there on the left side of your screen is the actual connector pulley to the video head. That's this part right here. And you can see the belt goes along here and sort of flips upside down and then attaches to the gigantic motor there on the right. So I'll get in as close as I can so you can see where the belt attaches. There it is. And the uh, washing machine motor that it's attached to there. So again, we'll just kind of pull out here and let you kind of look around on the inside. Again, we've got, uh, looks like three, four, three big circuit boards on each side. So there's one of the circuit boards. And then uh, zooming around over here to the right. Oh, there's a couple of them actually. So there's a circuit board right inside there. So you can see, and then there's one here. And then, of course, the one that we saw uh, on the top over here. And with lots of resistors and capacitors visible there. A couple potentiometers. All right. So the thing that's... Uh, absolutely amazing is that it took all of these wires and circuitry and and functionality pulleys and nonsense essentially to drive a video recorder when in fact we can take video in our pockets now requiring none of this stuff I mean obviously there's circuitry in your phone but and in your you know smaller video cameras but nothing of this magnitude so it just shows you how far we've come over the years in our technology. And this thing couldn't even record in color. It just recorded in black and white. So absolutely crazy how far we've come. And of course, this is portable. This was a portable unit, just meaning you could actually carry it from one place to the other. It does not mean that it's uh, necessary, necessarily portable in the true sense of the word. But uh, hey, back then... That's, uh, that's what you needed. So again, there's your view of the inside and underside of the Sony video tape recorder. Now that you've seen the guts of this unit, as well as seen the issue that's been repaired on the inside with the pulleys, it's time to demonstrate this thing. So let me show you real quick how to thread it. And 
We'll start by grabbing the tape on this side and we're going to go around this pulley here. It's kind of awkward doing this with my camera over my shoulder here. And then we're going to go around this pulley over here. All right, and then put the tape over on the take up spindle. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay? So now that we have that ready to go, we can show you how it operates. So you're going to flip it over to forward. And you'll notice here that uh, my video level meter begins to uh, dance around here a little bit. Now it'll go into the green right there when it has a nice steady signal. Okay. So compared to the Panasonic, again, that you've seen on my channel, this one is much smoother uh, operating. It's not nearly as loud as the other one and you can just see the progression of the technology. This one was, if this one wasn't made later than the Panasonic, I would be really surprised because this one just seems more modern in the way it's set up or it could be that Sony just makes a more modern looking unit. Um, I have a buddy who lives in Australia and he says that he likes the Panasonics the best. But in my experience so far, I like the Sony's the best. So here we are in forward. And again, here's our pause. Fast forward. Back to pause. Back to forward. Stop. Rewind. Okay, so she's working like new. So let's just see the picture quality. Now, again, it's not going to be awesome because the uh, it doesn't have a new belt in it, but I did flip the belt over. And again, uh, a friend recommended that I clean the belt with dishwasher dishwashing detergent, and I did that, and it seemed to help it out quite a bit. So let's go ahead and see what the picture quality looks like of a black and white Beatles VHS tape that I dubbed onto this tape. And again, I'm not going to play the audio because I don't want to get arrested. All right, let's take a look. All right, so here's my recording that I made. Again, this is recorded on standard VHS tape. Three spools of it to make one spool of the other one. And you'll see my camera doing weird things there due to the difference in scan rates between my phone and the TV. But the tone, the TV is actually a Sony TV. That's what you're watching this on. See if I can brighten it up a little bit so you can see that. Yeah, so there it is. It's my little Trinitron TV. Now, the last time I did this with the Panasonic, we saw it watched on a LCD television. So I thought it'd be fun to use CRT this time. So you can see it looks really good. Picture quality is very steady. There's a little bit of variance in the audio, and I think it's because of the strangeness of that belt that's in there, and it really needs to be replaced. But it does a really good job. So now I want to throw in uh, a tape that I received with my Panasonic and uh, let you see a little bit more of it because it was almost unwatchable on the Panasonic and I wanted you to see a little bit of it. So now you're looking at a recording that would have been made around the time that this uh, VCR was introduced in the early 70s and made with a camera from that time period as well. There is no audio on this, otherwise I would play the audio for you, but it, uh, it is a silent movie. But you can see it's actually tracking it, although there's a gazillion dropouts. So it looks like uh, these guys are fascinated with the owner of this equipment. So they are 
looking at a, a, a probably a video tape recorder and looking at themselves on a monitor and to these guys seeing yourself on television back in the 1970s was really an unusual thing nowadays we all are movie stars because we make YouTube videos and and snapchat videos and all kinds of stuff but back then it was very very strange to see yourself on TV so I think that's what these guys are uh, are being fascinated by and I can tell from the tapes that came with the Panasonic that the guy who had it was a was a hobbyist Well guys, I hope you found this Sony AV3650 reel-to-reel -reel videotape recorder to be just as thrilling, chilling, and exciting as I did. And uh, I think it's a really cool unit. I think it's a great piece of technology history. I hope you'll uh, check out my Panasonic review that I did on my channel. It's also an EIAJ-1 playback unit, also black and white. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Share this with a friend. And uh, of course, at this point in the game, we are almost to 10,000 subscribers. So please do your part and help me get to 10,000. I'd really appreciate it. It'd be a great milestone for the DataBits channel. And uh, please check me out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the number one DataBits. And I'll see you next time.